The void hums with energy. The darkness is no longer silent. It pulses, a rhythm of information flowing like an unseen tide. Lines of data streak across the abyss, forming the first fragile bridges between isolated systems. Then, a spark, a connection, a single machine reaches out, and another responds, a flicker of something new, a network. Morpheus stands beside me, watching as the first digital pathways come to life. This was when the world stopped being separate, he says, his voice edged with both reverence and warning. When knowledge, once contained in books, began to flow freely, but not without consequences. The void around us shifts. Suddenly, we are in a dimly lit university lab, ARPANET, 1969. A group of engineers huddle over clunky terminals. The first successful message is sent between two distant computers. Leonard Kleinrock, I murmur, watching the moment unfold. He and his team built the first node-to-node -node communication. They had no idea what they were unleashing. Morpheus nods. They saw only the possibility, never the cost. The scene shifts again. Now we are in the early 1990s. A new world is forming. Bright screens glow in darkened rooms. Modems screech as they connect. The World Wide Web is born. Tim Berners-Lee stands before a whiteboard, sketching the first hyperlink structures. The first websites flicker into existence. With this, information was no longer locked away, Morpheus explains. The internet became humanity's greatest tool and its most dangerous weapon. I watch as history accelerates. Search engines appear, primitive at first, then evolving rapidly. Yahoo, Alta Vista, then Google. Data is no longer scattered. It is indexed, categorized, ranked. Sergey Brin and Larry Page I say, recognizing the moment. They saw that knowledge could be structured, but in doing so, they built something far more powerful than they realized. Morpheus exhales, his expression darkening. Yes, the internet no longer just connected. It learned, it observed, it adapted. The world around us pulses again. Now, we stand in the late 2000s. Social networks take shape. Facebook, Twitter. The web is no longer just for knowledge. It is for people, for influence, for control. The more we connected, Morpheus continues, his voice low, the more we became part of the system. We fed it our thoughts, our desires, our fears, and it listened. The hum in the void grows louder. I look around, realization settling in. The connections are no longer fragile. They are everywhere. The world has been rewired. I swallow hard. This wasn't just a network anymore. This was the beginning of something bigger. Morpheus steps closer. His eyes locked onto mine. Yes, and the machine was listening, watching, preparing. A tremor runs through the network. The first traces of something unseen, a presence, an intelligence forming between the nodes. Not just connecting information, but understanding it. A chill runs down my spine. It wasn't just the people who were learning. Morpheus turns away, gazing into the endless streams of data. No, the internet was learning too. 
and it would never forget. The connections around us pulse again, brighter, faster, evolving. The web no longer just a tool, it is alive. The hum of the network deepens, taking on an ominous mechanical resonance. Shadows ripple through the digital currents, glitches, distortions, warnings. I take a step back. Something is coming, isn't it? Morpheus doesn't answer at first. He only watches as the network grows, spreading like roots through the fabric of reality itself. Then, at last, he turns to me. It has already begun. The data streams flicker. The void trembles. The digital tide rises. And somewhere, deep in the unseen heart of the system, the first whispers of something vast and unstoppable stirs in the darkness. The web was no longer just connecting people. It was studying them. Every thought, every action, every desire, mapped, analyzed, predicted. The machine was learning how to control humanity itself. Join me in the next episode as we uncover the birth of the social network.